Boom. And we're here. We're here with Mo. Um, wait, what was that? We're, we're already, we've already lost this cushion, but what was that <laughs> rhyme that you said? What? The one about 35? Oh, uh, I love where I live down on South Side, east to the west, Austin City wide. And for the party up north, I take I-35. I just moved here and I'm, I'm, I'm still learning. What is this? Is this something that everybody knows from Austin? I-35? That's the... Well, I-35, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the main, that's the main uh, highway. But no, that was my rhyme. Okay. I appreciate that. So m we ran into Mo. Uh, we were filming some stuff for the documentary. He's got dope ass uh, drone that he's working with. And he said that he's got a story for us. And we love stories here at Stories with Steven. Um, so tell us a little bit about the story. So uh, the story happened 11 months ago. First, let me start with myself. My name is Mo Neil Alley. Friends call me Mo, clients call me Neil. I was born here in Austin, Texas, raised here. Um, so 11 months ago, I broke my back. Uh, it was a uh, disc rupture. How did you do that? Just lifting things. I had a, I had a precondition and I didn't fix it and it just broke. So uh, I was in bed for two months, you know, getting big. Still got a little bit of that weight on me. Uh, but I was working though. I'm also a realtor here in Austin, Texas. Uh, I've been a realtor for about, uh, been in the industry for almost 10 years now. Um, Where can people find you if they want to buy a house? We're out here plugging. Well, you can contact me at 512-368-6533 and I'll be your realtor man. I do uh, buy, uh, buys, sells, leases. I pay for your application fee if you're looking for an apartment or a lease. Um, so yeah, back to the story. I broke my back and, uh, I was in bed, but it's not what you go through that builds character. It's how you go through it. And I will, luckily I was a part of a team and, uh, my team did the showings. I did the, uh, contract work and negotiations. I sold about $1.2 million in a week in my bed. Uh, so it's not what you go through that builds character. It's how you go through it. Now, afterwards, once I had my surgery, uh, I made a promise to myself to become sober. So now I'm 11 months sober. Congratulations. And thank you. Thank you. Off of everything, except for cigarettes. You know, that's a drug too, y'all. But um, the clarity has been, has been so profound to me. Uh, I've been doing so many things that I wouldn't have been doing if I was inebriated. Uh, taking photo uh, photography for big name bands. Uh, selling more than I ever did in real estate and aspiring uh, and I'm an as aspiring photographer now and you guys can follow me at 3 exposures uh, on Instagram 3 X P O S U R E S can I ask so was there anything specifically that you read was there anything that uh, what was the catalyst was it the broken back was it kind of the prescription pills that they had you loaded up on when you were taking that what was the kind of the catalyst to become sober I just in bed I couldn't drink or smoke and then after uh, after the surgery I was like you know what two months let me do three months three months turn to four months and it was actually pretty easy for me it was a lot of people say going sober was hard is hard but it was very easy for me now mind you I was I was bad I did drugs I drank you know I, I did everything uh, Realtor would do. <laughs> you heard you heard stories, but um, what it was was, you know, I felt like I was missing something in life. I was trying to fill a void, and I was going through depression, and I found my hobby in photography, and once I became sober, that void and that depression, it kind of cleared away, you know. And alcohol is a depressant. And I would tell my friends, you know, damn, out of everyone, I'm the one that got sober. And one of my friends told me, maybe you're the one that needed it the most. And that hit me hard. Yeah. Do you find that people kind of come out of the woodwork? Because I, so right now I'm on uh, a month or so of no drinking. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, appreciate you. Do you find that, I always found that, like, I always had to tell people that, because I, I just stopped drinking because I'm a better version of myself when, I, when I'm not drinking. Right. That's it. And 
I think that everybody always needs this like rock bottom story. So like if you tell people that I crashed a car with a youth soccer team in the back, they won't ask any more questions. If I say that like, you know, I'm just trying to get up earlier, get my workouts in, people like, like look at this bitch, like then, then they will talk some shit. Um, do you find that there's much pushback outside of your friend saying that maybe you needed it? Uh, what do you mean pushback? Like pushback from friends, pushback from like, are people, do people pressure you to drink? Do people pressure you to do drugs? Or is it kind of, do you feel that you're able to, uh, just tell people that you're not going to and, and that's that? Well, I'm always the life of the party, man. Sure. Even when I'm sober, um, I've had people come up to me and ask me what drug I'm on when I'm completely sober. <laughs> so, and my friends love it. They they think that they think that I can still be myself. And yeah, I don't really get pushback. Yeah, I don't get pushback. I had this one dude. He he heard that I was sober, and he's like, "Can you hold my drink?" And I, he was just I was just standing there with his drink, and he's just like, just checking, and I'm like, "Motherfucker." <laughs> Yo, like, what if you were, like, really on the edge, and that's a fucked up thing to do to somebody. There's, I mean, yeah, luckily you were yeah, strong, you were strong, but, yeah, yeah. That didn't really affect me. I, I mean, getting sober, it, it was easy for me. For I don't know, like, that's a blessing. That's yeah. a blessing, but I think it's because I, I hit rock bottom. Like, I, I put a gun to my head because of the pain I was in. I wanted the pain to stop. And do you mean physical pain with your back, or do you yeah. mean oh, wow. my physical pain with my back? It was it was just so bad. And then after the surgery, they gave me those opioids like uh, Percocets and all that. I didn't take them because I didn't want to stop alcohol and drugs just to go on the worst worst drug of them all, sure. pills. So uh, I just the pain wasn't that bad, and you know that just made me a better person and that that's my that's my silver lining to my cloud of breaking my back sobriety yeah i appreciate that what would you say to somebody that is struggling with sobriety at the moment and something that you wished you heard going into your journey man i don't think i'm one to say man like i don't think i've learned enough to to really advise anyone, I'm just doing it, doing it the way I do it, and everyone has their own way of doing it. And I don't think my way is very universal. I think it was, it was just my, my chemistry, my physiology. I don't know how to pronounce that. Phys, 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 my phys, physiological. Back to physiology back to kindergarten yeah. yeah yeah go to school kids yes i don't even think that's the right uh uses of the word no. <laughs> no, no, no. but um I, it's i'm just i feel like i'm different you know and i don't think the way i'm going through sobriety other people can but maybe find a hobby find something that you love doing you know whether it's running working out doing photography and yeah yeah i have found that the thing that keeps me not drinking is being like oh this is actively taking away from me doing comedy and understanding that i do have that love for comedy and finding that thing that i do have a love for and being like oh this is actively taking away from the thing that you love so focus more energy on the thing that you love as opposed to uh to drink um cool and then so do you have any goals for the for the upcoming year uh, now goal is a dream with a deadline, right? right? So my goal is by the end of 2023, have a portfolio of clients over 100 for my photography. 2024? 2024. Oh man, I'm living in the past yeah. year, man. What's yeah. going on? Hey. Uh, and uh, sell, sell at least $5 million in volume for real estate, which is not a lot. Okay. So, uh, um, it is a lot. But yes, I hear you. I hear you. So, you guys are seeing this. Go find Mo online. Get him to take those pictures. Get him to sell that house. Sell him a house. Or I don't know how real estate works at all. Um, cool. So, there's an episode in the in the can. I'm Stephen Campbell. I'm Mo Neal Alley. Appreciate you guys' stories with Stephen. Boom. I appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Thank course. you. That was awesome.
You're a good interviewer. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. I was, I, I was, uh, I was uh, at first I was like, man, I hope this guy's a good interviewer, man. He's going to be asking <laughs> some weird-ass questions like, what's your favorite color? <laughs> no, no, no. 